feeling so hopeless today. School started and I hate my classes and I don't even know how I feel about some of my friends anymore. Did you hear that? Was that gunshots? I've been feeling really down lately. My mom's been focused on my baby sister and my little brother, and my dad's been working really hard lately. And I'm just not happy with all the stuff that's been going on around me, and I have no control over it. The other day, Kay got pulled out of school because she was cutting herself. And then, Carrie's brother recently died because he overdosed on some sort of opium. And there's no one I can talk to about this because my mom and dad are unavailable, and I really only have you. We're very lucky. This show is having two speakers uh, who have dedicated their lives in many ways to helping girls with self-esteem and resilience. And um, I want to jump in. We sort of assign questions uh, and we're, we're ready to go. So um, Lynn, you seem to be uh, the first one up. And um, if you're, if it's okay with you, I'm going to ask the question, okay? Perfect. Self-esteem lays the foundation for a child's emotional well-being. How important is that in the work you do? So at Girls on the Run, self-esteem is one of the most important things that we teach. Um, they learn about self-esteem through many of the lessons that we teach each week um, during the eight week season. Um, so they learn about star power, which is a belief that how happy or how um, excited they are is deep inside themselves. And they learn ways that they can tap into that star power to really understand that they are wonderful just the way they are. Beautiful. That's a great answer. You must feel so excited when those eight weeks come up. <laughs> yeah, we. <laughs> it takes a lot to get it going, but we do one season in the fall and one season in the spring. Um, so our next season will be starting the week of September 23rd. Um, and it culminates in a 5K race on November 24th. Beautiful. Well, let's go on to the second question. And uh, I think that uh, Donna's up for that one. Yes, I am. How do you think we can teach resilience to children, particularly in the face of issues like lockdowns, school shootings, and climate change? Um, so, you know, it's funny. I looked up resilience. Like, what is, what is the meaning of resilience? And I think a lot of people have different opinions on that. But one of the things that struck me was the seven C's of resilience. And of those seven C's, we address five of them. Competence, competence, character building, and connection to others are our five C's. And those are also five of the seven C's of resilience. And I think in especially in those instances of lockdown, school shootings, they're scary. It's, it's very scary for kids the age that we we work with it's third through fifth and they may not understand they just like hear it on the news or hear their parents talking about it and one of the lessons we do also teach is called um feel your feelings and it's about emotions and that how important emotions are and that there's no good or bad emotions there's comfortable and uncomfortable and recognizing those that are comfortable which are easy it's happiness it's joy it's excitement and uncomfortable ones which might be nervousness or being scared and knowing that it's okay and you should talk to somebody about it so that you go to a parent or you go to a teacher and express why you're scared or you're anxious about something so that you can get sort of some advice or they can make you feel a little bit better like yes there was a lockdown but it's so that we can keep you safe 
everything's okay. We just want to make sure you're safe. That's why we do that. I think sometimes people don't explain things to kids. And that's why they have all the anxiety and the and the scared. So we try to address all of those things in Girls on the Run with all the lessons that we do. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. And I think the more they spend time with people like yourselves who are trained and, and sincere and honest and, you know, right with a program, then they quiet inside lots of times and even probably can go home and surprise their parents on some of the growth that's happened. Right, because some of the emotions, they're sort of told to push to the side. You shouldn't be scared of that. You know, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be sad about that. But they are, then they, they, they need to feel those feelings and understand why they feel them. And that's, so, I think, where parents and teachers and coaches, their coaches come in. Yes. So back to uh, number three, which is Lynn's, uh, let me read the question. What are some of the healthy coping strategies you think might help children manage anxiety and uncertainty effectively? So we teach them a lot of coping strategies that you they can use every day at home, at school, and with their friends. Um, we teach them if they're upset about something that they can either tap into themselves and do something that they really enjoy, like reading or running or playing soccer or doing something for themselves. Um, or they can also reach out to a friend and the two of them can have a good time doing something that they both enjoy. We also teach positive self-talk, which helps them turn negative feelings into positive feelings and seeing that if you turn it around, you can usually find something good about it. Um, and we also do a lesson where they do a meditation and they learn about deep breathing and taking a breath before they make a decision or taking a breath before they turn around and retaliate against someone because they kicked their chair, you know, and they really learn that if they stop and take a breather, it helps them manage those emotions. Beautiful. That's great. Um, all right. I'm going to go right on to the fourth question for Donna. Social media can significantly impact a child's self-esteem and mental health. Do you in any way address the challenges posed by social media? We don't necessarily address specifically social media with this age group. You know, most of our girls are third through fifth. We do have a sixth through eighth grade program, but the majority of our girls are third through fifth. And honestly, I would hope most of them are not on social media. I know that's probably not true. <laughs> Um, and I think the biggest thing with social media and girls, boys, but a lot of it girls is comparing themselves to others and what others are posting on social media. Because we didn't know that, uh, I think I just read somewhere, only 2% of people post anything negative about themselves. So, so that's what these girls are comparing themselves to. So again, a lot of our lessons that build self-esteem and confidence are a way to address that as well. And Lynn had mentioned star power. And that's a lesson where we do um, a visualization where they close their eyes and we read, you know, imagine a bright light coming out of your head and how good that feels and positive that is. Wow. And imagine clouds covering that light. And we talk to them about what makes your star power shine. You know, my friends, my family, and what clouds it over when I think I'm gonna fail a test or my friend won't talk to me. And then we teach them ways to take that cloud and get rid of it and make their star power shine. And who can help you do that? Sometimes you can't do it yourself. And a lot of times it's my friend will help me. My mom will help me. My dad, my brother, you know, my teacher. I mean, we, we ask them, run to this spot. Who's going to help you? And there's different things like that. And so they learn, you know, again, you know, I think Lynn mentioned earlier is how to activate their star power and need it and positive and negative self-talk and why it's important to recognize when you're talking negatively to yourself. And we all do that. Why, why is it important to recognize it? 
because you can't turn it around if you don't recognize what you're doing. And then same thing, who can help you turn that negative self-talk into positive self-talk? And we do a lesson where one girl reads a card, uh, she writes down on a card her negative self-talk and her friend changes it and turns into something positive for her. That's fabulous education going on. Yes, and then the other thing too is is the confidence building is the 5K race. We don't, we're not a running program, but the girl set a goal of running a 5K and it's very scary for them. Talking about resilience, when you say you're gonna run 3.1 miles, their, their initial response is always, I'll never be able to do that. That's gonna be really, really hard. So when they cross the finish line in the 5K, it's like, look what you did. You said this is going to be really hard, but you did it. You got your medal. You crossed the finish line. You you met you met your goal. So that so we use that to teach them if you set a goal and work towards it, little by little, you'll achieve it. And that can transfer to any area of your life. You can do whatever you want. You can be whatever you want. You just have to set the goal and work towards it. Sometimes we say that the when they cross the finish line, the finish line is just the beginning. So it's really taking all the skills that they've learned and turning them into skills that they use. We have college students that did our program 20 years ago that are now coaching with us that say so many of the skills that they learned in Girls on the Run are skills that they still think about every day. Well, they're such, used. they're such healthy skills. They're such demanding yet possible skills that help someone really grow into being a great human being. You've tapped into the right skills. And let me jump to the last question, which you're both uh, welcome to talk about. Um, I always love this kind of thing, because when I was a little girl, my mother and I would sit in the car waiting for my father wondering what we would do if the millionaire came up on knocked on our door. <laughs> Question is, if you became a millionaire overnight, what would you do to help kids create a better world? Well, Lynn and I both discussed this. And the one thing we said was we could give girls on the run to everyone. Every girl that could do it could do it. Because one of the obstacles to to give it giving getting it to more girls is um, out of 2,500 girls in the program annually, we scholarship or provide financial support for the program fee to about eight to 900 of them. So if we could just go into every school district and say, we're gonna, we just want to give you this program. You don't, nobody has to pay anything. We, we don't, you know, we have the funding we need to keep the organization going. We would love to just spread, spread this program as, as much as we could. And, and, and also, yeah, ahead, I mean, what we feel is that you know, what does a better world mean? And I feel like the skills that we give the girls that will help them determine what's going to make a better world for them and the people that are in their generation. So defining a better world, you know, they need to better understand themselves and the world around them as they grow up. And, and if they can be resilient and they can be confident and they can be self-aware, you know, I, when I was in third grade, I was hanging up upside down on the jungle gym. You know, <laughs> this is a very different experience. Very different. And the skills that they're learning really can translate into making them better humans. You know, one of the lessons is about empathy and putting yourself in someone else's place, you know, to really understand why they're doing what they're doing or what, or what they're doing, which I think is, can be lacking across the board sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, this is, I wish I had had something like that. I'm old enough that the girls never really had any uh, access to sports. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a completely different world. Yes, there were girls that, you know, love sports and got their parents to pay for tennis lessons or right. went bowling. But the whole concept for girls was sports are for boys. And you have other things. Right. I mean, I petitioned our high school to get a gymnastics team when I was a freshman in high school. And they did. But, you know, that was the beginning. That was right. just the beginning. Right. Yeah. I played on the boys tennis team in high school because there was no girls. <laughs> yeah. Well, you both had the energy within you. I didn't have that energy. I would 
roller skate by myself and things like that. But I needed someone to partner me, someone to, you know, enroll me in something. And so it's so wonderful that this is there now. I want to ask a question. It's nothing, I didn't write it down, just off the top of my head. Can you tell us a little bit how you came together, the two of you, and how you got your energies to create this program? <laughs> um, I've, I've been a lifelong runner, and I was working at a YMCA, and I saw this program in, um, it's called the Golden Shoe Award in the Runner's World magazine, and I just thought, this is perfect. I would love to do this. Long story short, I, I left the Y and was a recreation director, was going to start it there. And then the Y started the program. They called me and said, would you coach for us? So I said, I'll coach. And then the next season, they said, will you be our council director? And that was 23 years ago. So that's how long I've been doing it. And then Lynn started coaching for me. So she can tell you how she. Yeah. So I, yeah, I saw a little ad in the paper about girls on the run coming to Middlesex County. And that's where I live. And I grabbed one of my friends who happened to have been the nurse at the high school. And I said, we have to do this because I'm also a runner. And um, I went to the recreation department and I said, you know, will you help us? We really want to start this program. And we started in Highland Park and we it was just incredibly successful. I still bump into kids there that did it that, you know, our, my first group are going to be seniors in high school this year. And wow. they still talk about the program. Um, and then I just, I got on the advisory board and then I went to Donna and I said, uh, let's grow this. I really want to, you know, give this opportunity to so many more girls. And that started our partnership here. <laughs> oh, Wow. And you live separately, right? In the different yeah. areas of the country. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're, she's in, um, uh, I'm in Brunswick, I'm in Hillsborough. So we're, yeah. we're, we're close. So, uh, but it's just fascinating. So what about people who see this little show on resilience and self-esteem and you've excited them? Can you give some simple ways they can follow up to get their girls in the program or find out more about it? Sure. I guess the best thing would just go to our website, which is G O T R C N J. So girls on the run, central New Jersey, G O T R C N J dot org. And all of our contact information is there. All the information about the program, uh, links to register links to be a coach and links to reach out to Lynn or I, if they have questions or want to start a site. So it is very possible to find you and add it to their lives. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing this, not only with me, uh, because I, I'm afraid I am not going to be a runner. It's the time, is <laughs> but sharing it with the world at large so that so many more girls around eight, nine, ten can do this. Thank you just so much for giving your time and your thoughts. Thank you so much for having us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. We always love to share this program. <laughs> Great. Good night. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Enjoy. Good Bye. night.